Hello, I'm Hope from Hope Rotary, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this simple little project where you're going to learn three different ways to make leaves and three different ways to make stems. So you can do this in a three inch hoop like this one right here, or a four inch hoop like this one right here. Whatever size hoop you've got, that's what you should use. So for this project, you're going to need an embroidery hoop. You're gonna need some embroidery floss, fabric of your choosing. You're gonna need a needle. You'll need a pencil to draw your design and I'll show you how to do that. You're gonna need a piece of cardboard cut out like this. I know that's a little strange. What I want you to do is to take some spare cardboard, trace the inside of your hoop and cut it out. That's how we're gonna back our hoop at the end. So go ahead and do that before you get started. And you're also gonna need some scissors. Now, I like to use these cute embroidery scissors. You don't need to use embroidery scissors if you don't have any. You can just use your scissors from your kitchen drawer. Now, the first thing we need to do is to get our fabric inside of our hoop. So I'm using this pretty blue linen. I'm gonna just take it here. And what you're gonna do is separate your inner hoop from your outer hoop. Place your inner hoop underneath your fabric. And as a general rule, I recommend that if you're right-handed, you have the screw on your right hand, and if you're left-handed, you have your screw on your left, hand, left side because it's easier to get tight that way. I'm gonna put my outer hoop on top. And I'm gonna screw it, but not all the way tight just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and trim around my hoop. Okay, so before I screw this all the way tight, I'm gonna take my fabric and pull so that's really nice and tight in my hoop going all the way around, just pulling the edges tightly. And then I'm gonna screw it a little bit more tightly. That's about as tight as I can get it without hurting my fingers. Make sure the fabric is pulled nice and tight. Sometimes this is easier. Um, it just depends on your fabric and your hoop, how long it takes you to get it nice and tight, but it should sound like a drum. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is trim around my hoop. And I do that because if I don't, I know I'm gonna end up stitching this to the back of my hoop. So I wanna leave, these are not fabric scissors, so they don't work super well. I wanna leave enough so that I can tuck this in later when I back my hoop with my cardboard. So don't cut it too close. Okay, so now my hoop is ready to go. Now what I need to do is grab a length of floss from my skein, skein, however you pronounce that. Find the edge, pull. And I'm gonna take about an arm's length of floss every time I Grab some, that's usually enough to do a little bit of work before I have to redo it. And to thread your needle, you're gonna get the end kind of wet and then pinch it, pinch it so that it's kind of flat. That way it's a little bit easier to get through the eye of your needle. And you'll end up with a tail of about that long. So as you're stitching, it shouldn't come undone. You don't need to tie a knot there or anything. You'll be stitching like that. But if it does, you just re-thread it. So that's on one end of my floss. And on the other end, I'm gonna tie a singular knot like that. 
and then I'm going to cut off the tail. And what that does is prevent my floss from coming through the fabric when I make my first stitch. Now I am stitching in a four inch hoop like this hoop right here, but I'm going to be stitching in my embroidery stand. All that does is keep the stitches nice and visible on the camera for you. You don't need an embroidery stand to do embroidery. And because my stand is going to cover part of the top of my hoop, I'm actually going to stitch as though I'm stitching in a three inch hoop like this one right here. So I'll end up framing it in a three inch hoop. That's why I've drawn a little blue circle around here. You don't need to draw that circle. Don't worry about that. I'm just gonna have it in the stand so it's easier for you to follow along. So in the next shot, you'll see that I'm in my embroidery stand and we'll start drawing out our design. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to get our little design onto our hoop. So again, we're pretending like I'm stitching in a three inch hoop. And again, you do not need an embroidery stand to do this. So go ahead and get your pencil. And the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a little dot in the center of the hoop towards the top and a little dot down here. And that's just to guide me as I draw this first leaf. So then I'll take it and curve it up. It does not have to be perfect. This is just for practice. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw my first leaf. Does not have to be perfect. Like that. Then I'm going to come over here and curve one up like that so that I can make my next leaf. Now these pencil marks really hard to get out of fabric, but we're gonna stitch over them, so don't worry about that. And actually, as I'm looking at it, I want this to go a little bit lower, like that. It's hard to do this not on a table. Then I'm just gonna draw another thing coming out. Now, that's not perfect. And it looks a little bit different from this original one that I made, but that's fine. Everybody's is going to look a little bit different when you do this. All right, the first type of leaf I'm going to show you is a satin stitched leaf. And I'm using all six strands of my embroidery floss. I'm going to start by coming up through the top and middle of that leaf, pulling it all the way through, and then go straight down the middle. Now, sometimes when I do satin stitch, I might make guidelines where I stitch from here to here and then here to here and then fill it in. But because this space is nice and small, it should be easy enough for me to go ahead and fill the whole thing in without doing that. So I'm going to start by filling in from here all the way to the right. By, I'm going to be following this line that I drew and coming up just to the right of that original stitch. Come up and then I'll go down just to the right of that bottom stitch. You want these to be nice and tight. And for satin stitch to work, that fabric really needs to be tight. So if you need to pause to re-tighten your fabric while you're making your piece, like going like that to make it a little bit tighter, that's totally normal. And you can see my left hand here is almost holding the hoop as though I was not even using a stand. That's sort of the position your hands would be in while you stitched this. You can do your leaves and your stems and 
different colors if you want. Get creative with it. And once you learn these, you'll have new ways of incorporating different techniques into your pieces. All right, I've almost covered this whole side. One more stitch. Now I'm ready to do that same thing from here to that end. Now if you're stitching along with me, just keep in mind that, especially if you're new, you're not supposed to be as fast. Maybe you're a lot faster than me. Either way, feel free to fast forward or rewind as you need. I'm about to run out of floss, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I end my floss. So go ahead and look up if you're stitching. You can thread your needle in and out of the back of your work if you want until it feels nice and tight. Or you can even tie a knot like this. You just don't want to pierce your fabric. And then I like to snip off that excess. And of course I already have some more floss threaded. So then I'll just continue on from where I left off. want these stitches to be nice and tight but if you're pulling so tightly that your fabric is starting to munch up then that means you need to retighten that fabric a little bit First leaf is done with satin stitch. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to our first stem, which we're going to be making with whipped back stitch. So to do that, we're going to be following this stem all the way up using something called back stitch. So you'll just come up, and that first distance for that first stitch is gonna determine the rest of your stitches down this stem. I'll show you what that means. So I'm gonna come down, and then I'm gonna go up that same distance, come back down through, and that's back stitch. just gonna go all the way until I meet this other stem. Now I'm gonna whip it. So I'm gonna come up through this hole up here. And I'm gonna pass my needle underneath each back stitch without piercing the fabric. Underneath, without piercing the fabric, pull. Pull. And this is called whipped back stitch. Whipped 
Now once I've gotten all the way to the end, to finish that, I'm just gonna go straight down through this stitch right there. And now you've learned your first leaf and your first stem. For our second leaf, we're gonna be using something called fly stitch along with back stitch. And then for our second stem, we'll be doing um, a form of split stitch called split back stitch. Don't worry about all those terms. <laughs> I'll put them in little titles. So to start, you're gonna come up through the middle top of your leaf. Go down however long you want your stitches to be. And for this first fly, what I'm gonna do is pretend like there's an invisible line going down across where this stitch is and up here and I'm gonna come up through the middle of it, like this. Then I'll go down right there so it looks like I'm almost crossing that stitch, but I wanna leave a loop, so don't pull all the way just yet. Come up through here so that the loop, it's coming through the loop and pull and then you'll go down that same distance to secure your fly stitch. Now for my next fly stitch, I'm gonna pretend like, you see this little space where they're all connecting? I'm gonna pretend like there's a line going across and that's where I'm gonna come up on my leaf shape. Line going across, go down on my leaf shape. And then I'll come up through this stitch, leaving a loop, pulling, and then secure. All the way down until I'm done. Now, let's take a look at this. So for me, I think I need another stitch right there. But you can see in this sample, I didn't. So you can, it's kind of hard to tell that you can see a little bit of um, my pencil mark. Let's say you get down here and you've got a lot of space to fill in and you want to fill that in. You can do a fly stitch by coming up, down. And the only difference is how we'll secure it. And instead of going up, <laughs> I'm just gonna go right over that stitch to secure it down. Now that's the fly stitch part. Now what I'm gonna do is connect each of these with back stitch. So I'll come up through here. down through this stitch all the way around until the shape is connected. And look at that, we have our second leaf. 
Now we're going to learn our second stem right here. And we're going to use a stitch called split back stitch. It's a lot like back stitch, so you'll start by coming up. And then going down. And then come up that same distance and almost like you're about to do a back stitch, but instead of coming through this same hole right here, you're going to split your stitches or your floss, I'm sorry, you're going to split your floss by going halfway through that first stitch you made and pulling down. So that's splitting those stitches right there. You don't have to worry about how many stitches or how many pieces of floss you split it into or anything like that. You're just splitting it. So I'll come up the same way. And then I'll go halfway down that second stitch. And then I'll come up here. Same thing. And to finish off this stitch, I'm gonna come up through this hole right here and then go back down over itself. And now you know two ways to do stems. Okay, our third and final leaf is gonna be fishbone stitch. So this one looks a little funny when you get started, but once you get towards the end, it looks really nice. So just like the other two, we're gonna come up through the top. I like to go about halfway down like this. Now you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna come up just to the left of that initial stitch following this stitch line, the line that we drew. And I'm gonna pass the floss over to this side. Then I'll pretend like there's an imaginary line going from here to here and I'll come up and I'll go following that line again just to the right of that original stitch. Now, I know what you're thinking. This stitch looks silly. Up, down. But as you fill it in, This is one where people get a little worried if they run out of floss in the middle of the stitch, which I'm about to, so I'll show you. I'm just gonna go ahead and end it like I normally would. It's a great reason for me to show you the back of my hoop right now, which is messy. Um, so it's a good reminder to you that nobody cares what the back of your hoop looks like. So don't worry about that. Okay. So I ended on a stitch that went from here to here. So I'm gonna start with my new floss by coming up here. So it's really like a fancy satin stitch, <laughs> if you think about it. And in fact, to finish it off, we'll be using a little bit of satin stitch. So just keep going. to keep going in this pattern until I get to the middle of the bottom part where the floss meets. And I'll show you what that looks like here in uh, two seconds. So I'm gonna come up, making a pass down. And you see how at the bottom here I'm out of fabric. Now I will come up through here 
And what I'm gonna do is just satin all the way down till I get to the end of the leaf, and then satin all the way down on that end as well. So finished on that side. I'm just going to do the same thing on the left side here. One problem people tend to have with fishbone stitch, and me included, I'm people, is that we don't trust the lines that we've drawn. Just follow those lines. All the way until you're done. And now you know three different ways to stitch a leaf. Okay, now that you know your three different ways to stitch a leaf, I'm gonna show you your third way to stitch a stem. It's our superstar. It's, it's literally called stem stitch here in the middle. So to do that, I'm gonna start from the bottom of this stem, come up, and just like our other stitches that we used, this first stitch will determine the length of your other stitches. So I'm gonna go up about this far and I'm gonna leave a loop, kind of like I did with fly stitch. And then I'm gonna come up as close to this original stitch as I can, although it can be kind of hard on that first one to do that. So get it just as close as you can and then pull in the direction that you're stitching. So right now it just looks like a back stitch with a tail but it'll start looking like a stem during the second stitch. So I'm gonna go that same distance up, pull down, holding the floss with my hand so that I have a loop, come up through the last stitch I made, pull, and I'll keep going all the way up. Now, all of these stitches I've shown you for the stem, yes, they're great for stems, stem stitch, lift back stitch, split back stitch. But they're also good for anything you wanna stitch that has a curve to it. Maybe you wanna stitch some handwriting. Maybe you have a drawing that you wanna stitch and there's lots of curves in it. And the leaf stitches that I showed you are they're great for leaves, they're great for petals, they're great for really any kind of stitch you need to do where you need to fill in an area. All right, if you're stitching along with me, go ahead and look up so that I can show you how to end your stem stitch. So for this final one, I'm coming down. Oops. Back up. And to end it, I'm going to go down through the stitch that I just made and secure it to the back. So now you know three different ways to stitch a leaf, three different ways to stitch a stem. I'm going to show you how to finish your project. 
Okay, so now I have put my design into my little three inch hoop. So at this point, before we back it, if your fabric is about this long, you'll notice that when you put your cardboard um, to back it, that it might push up against your fabric, making it a little bit more bumpy like that. So if that's the case, you can just take it and trim it a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I finish backing it. And then I'm gonna take that piece of cardboard that I cut out at the very beginning of my project, flip my hoop over, and I'm gonna gather the fabric with my left hand like this. And then take my piece of cardboard, slide it over, and tuck in that fabric. And then I'm gonna push this down just so that it is sitting right in there. I'm not gonna push it all the way down because then that could cause the front to get a little bit bumpier than I like, but now it's done. Look at that. And I can see some of my pencil marks, but that's okay because it's not supposed to be perfect. It's handmade. Now, if you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And if you complete your project, I'd love to see what you make. So tag me at Hope Broidery on wherever you are on social media so that I can see what you make for this project. Happy stitching!